I've always loved and admired the power runner, the workhorse running back who wanted to lean on the defense, give it to me every time. Let me wear down the defense in the fourth quarter and take over the football game. Even as a little tyke watching Larry Zonka and Franco Harris. Yeah, I'm dating myself. More recently, Emmett Smith, although it's been a long time, he's probably the epitome of the modern-day workhorse running back. That second Super Bowl win over Buffalo, the Cowboys trailed at halftime 13-6. They left the locker room and they gave it to Emmett Smith time and time again. Six, seven, eight consecutive times. Nothing fancy Here we come, we're running downhill, we're coming at you, going to shove the football down your throats and take over the football game, and they won championships. Against the New York Giants that same season, to wrap up the regular season division championship at the Meadowlands, they gave it to Emmett over 30 times with a busted shoulder, and he took over the football game, and they won it. Those kind of guys. The guy for me last season was Michigan State's Le'Veon Bell. Not only did he run it 382 times, the fourth highest in the country, but it was the manner in which he ran the football. The defense knew Le'Veon Bell was the main guy in that offense. There was little threat of passing the football to the extent that I think this really sums it up. In the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl win over TCU, miraculously a win with almost no offense, Michigan State was led in passing by Le'Veon Bell with one drive to go. Up until that final drive of the fourth quarter, Le'Veon Bell, with like 25 or 30 yards passing on one pass, led the Michigan State passing offense. It was that bad. He took over the football game, though, with his legs in the second half, and he did that time and time again. Okay, how is Michigan State going to replace Le'Veon Bell in these numbers? Again, with the defense not respecting the passing game and with a target on his back, 382 carries, 1,793 yards. He accounted for 92% of Michigan State's rushing attack. Okay, here are the candidates, and head coach Mark D'Antonio has come out and stated that he really wants to find that one guy, and nobody's going to run the ball 382 yard times for this offense. 250 is what D'Antonio has cited, but I don't even see that out of these candidates. I think it's going to be running back by committee, although D'Antonio really wants to find that guy that can carry it time and time again, get in a groove, and wear down the defense in the fourth quarter. Okay, here are the candidates. Uh, You've got junior Nick Hill, who has been uh, Michigan State's top kickoff and punt returner of the last few seasons, especially in kickoff returns, third in school history in kickoff return yardage. He's carried it 21 times last season for 48 yards, just 163 yards in his career at Michigan State at 3.2 yards per carry. So that doesn't bode well, but that's in limited action. Okay, you got another junior in Jeremy Langford, who ran it uh, 10 times for 31 yards in the spring game. He's basically played special teams and has gotten little uh, work in the ground game, and he's coming into his junior season. Redshirt freshman uh, Nick Tompkins, who was the 72nd ranked running back coming out of high school by ESPNU in 2012. He had the most productive green and white game for Michigan State. Nick Tompkins did four carries, 43 yards. Another speed guy and freshman, R.J. Shelton, the 71st ranked running back according to ESPNU coming out of Wisconsin. Uh, Rivals and Scouts.com feel a little bit better about R.J. Shelton. Rivals.com has him ranked at 31 and scouts.com at number 44 in the country. Those are the speed guys. So if you separate it, meaning that two or three guys are going to get the bulk of the carries, you're going to rotate two guys, possibly three, you would think D'Antonio would want a change of pace. He would want the power guy and the speed guy. Those were the speed guys. Let's look at the most interesting story of spring practice, and that was Mark D'Antonio choosing to take Max Bullis little brother, Riley, take him from linebacker and move him to running back. He said he was even surprised that he did it. He said, I know I surprised everyone with this, but I didn't even expect. I basically walked onto the field at practice, looked around, had the running game on my mind and said, Riley, we're going to make you a tailback. Of course, we know what kind of running back he's going to be as a converted linebacker. He's 6'2", 232. He's going to run downhill and he could be a major factor in Michigan State's running game uh, this fall in 2013. Again, 6'2", 232, 
uh, Riley Bulla, a converted linebacker, moving to running back. You've got freshman Gerald Holmes, who is the 97th rated running back in the country coming out of Flint, Michigan. That's according to ESPNU. And again, rivals and scouts feels much better about Michigan State's uh, running back prospects coming out of high school. They've got him rated at 45 by rivals and 47 by scouts.com. Max Preps. Now, Mark Antonio hopes that they know what they're talking about. They've got Gerald Holmes rated as the 16th best running back coming out of high school this season. Another true freshman here, Delton Williams. He was not categorized by most services as a running back, but as an athlete, well thought of by ESPNU and rivals at 40 and 45 in their athletes' rankings. So again, those are your candidates. Mark D'Antonio would like to find one main guy to give it to about 200 to 250 times, but I'm guessing that they're going to have to mix and match two to three guys to try to replace Le'Veon Bell and hope that they develop a passing game. Michigan State hits camp later today on August 2nd, and they will be zeroing in on this backfield situation and what they need to do to try to replace the ground game because we know that D'Antonio needs to pass, but he loves to run. Michigan State fans would love to hear what you have to say about your running back prospects here on Mark Rogers TV.